time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Sportsnet LA presents the Dodgers as they take on the Atlanta Braves. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Friday evening to you, wherever you may be. Welcome to game one of the three with the Atlanta Braves. Dodgers come home, winning three and losing four on the road, five and a half games behind the Giants. But the Giants lost a terrible blow today because Hunter Pence will have leg surgery that would make him out for about the next eight weeks. For the Dodgers, taking on the Atlanta Braves, they played three in Atlanta. The Dodgers won two of the three, both of them, in extra innings. And for Atlanta, they just finished splitting four against the Giants in Georgia. As far as the Braves are concerned, they're two different teams. They played pretty well on the road. They're 10 and 14 at home, 6 and 23. And by the way, Dodgers look at the schedule, and 13 of the next 16 games are against teams under five. The other three would be against the Giants. Pitching tonight for Atlanta, Julio Tehran. He faced the Dodgers April the 20th, went five and a third, gave up two runs, and was not involved in the decision. The Dodgers won the game 5-3 in extra innings. Kenta Maeda, who's had that swollen hand, he'll be on the mound tonight with a record of four and three. And a reminder, tomorrow night, the National League Pitcher of the Month of May, that would be Clayton Kershaw, he'll go up against Mike fulton -Evich. So pull up a chair, we've got a good one coming up, and a whole lot more right after this.
and Friday evening to you, whatever you may be. Welcome to Dodger Stadium. It's a glorious evening. It was pretty hot all day, but now sunset time. The temperature is dropping. Crowd filing in, looking forward to a good ball game and some fireworks after the show. Meanwhile, the exchange of lineup cards, Nick Schnitzer and Dave Roberts, and the umpires four technically now have the ball game in their hands. The freight umpire, Mark Ripperger, it'll be followed by Kerwin Danley at first, Joe West at second, and Ramon De Jesus at third. Dodgers taking the field. And for Kenta Maeda, one day later than normal, still with a swollen right hand, having been hit by a line drive by Mike Conforto of the Mets. However, after that day's rest, Kenta says he is ready to go, and so we shall do just that and follow his lead. Nick Snitzer, the interim manager of the Braves, Freddie Gonzalez no longer with the club. So let's take a look at his lineup, and it goes this way. Enda Inciarte opens up in center field. Chase Darno, the shortstop. Then you have Freddie Freeman at first. Adonis Garcia at third. Nick Marquecas in right field. Tyler Flowers, the catcher. Kelly Johnson at second base. Julio Tehran, the pitcher, who will bat eighth, and then Malik Smith at ninth playing left field. Freddie Freeman, the local boy with the big bat. We'll see a lot of him tonight, and so will Kenta Maeda. Maeda with a record of four and three, and it's interesting, the two pitchers tonight are in contrast. For instance, Julio Tehran had an ERA in April of almost five, in May, 1.3. Maeda in April was 1.4 and his ERA in May is a little over five and you might not realize Tehran is that good a ball player his ERA for May third best in the mine in the major league behind the dominant figure of Clayton Kershaw so the stage is set for the two pitchers ready to go after each other the Dodgers not doing particularly well they've been hanging around 500 ball for the last 56 days. The Dodgers are 13 and 12 at home and 15 and 15 on the road. Let's take a look at Dave Roberts' defense and the fellas with the leather out there. No dramatic changes. Gonzalez and Upley on the right side. Seeger and Turner on the left. Crawford, Peterson, and Thompson in right. Grandall handling Maeda. There is news, however, when you look at Thompson in right field. Yasiel Puig, who's been bothered by the hamstring, has had to go on the DL. Scott Van Slyke, with his arms draped over the railing, is now activated and could very well see action. So action is about ready to take place. In CRT, left-hand batter checking in against Maeda. In CRT, from Maracaibo in Venezuela. Maeda into the windup, right hand already in the first pitch. A look at strike in the count 0 oh, and 1. Inciarte from Venezuela, originally drafted by the Diamondbacks, but if you've been reading the news at all, and if you are a ball player in the United States, you have to really worry about what's going on in Venezuela. The next pitch is low, one ball and one strike. Ender's full name is Ender David Montiel Inciarte. Left hand batter about 5'11", not much meat on the bones, maybe 165 pounds. Into the windup goes Maeda, back with a pitch, line drive right at Adrian Gonzalez. So in Ciarte, lining to Gonzalez, just like that, one away What's here in the first inning. Arno. And the batter now, Chase Darno, you may remember his brother, the catcher who's been on the DL with the Mets, and boy, they really miss him. Chase was talking about coming to the plate as a pinch hitter. And his brother was the catcher. And you can imagine two brothers, one trying to outthink the other. The first pitch to Chase, right hand batter. He takes a strike and the count 0 and 1. On deck, the best hitter in the lineup, the number three hitter, and that would be Freddie Freeman. One out, first inning, no score. Freeman waits, Darno waits. Strike one pitch is off the plate. One ball and one strike. Kenta Maeda trying to come back now. 
kind of a so so April and May. Four and three going into this game. One one pitch on the way fastball check swing foul. One and two the count to chase Darno. Darno in and out of the box. Chase born in Torrance and went to school at Pepperdine. One two pitch on the way. Maeda delivers a comebacker. Kenda has it and flips over to first. You may or may not remember when Maeda was pitching in Japan. He was the outstanding fielding pitcher over there. He won the award. I think it was five straight years. So the Dodgers with Maeda have an extra infielder in there. And here is Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman has nine home runs. The other eight hitters in the Atlanta lineup have a total of eight. Freeman, big left hand batter, born in Fountain Valley, lives in Orange, and takes low and away, ball one, one and oh. Freeman is a big fella, six feet five, 225. It'd be 27 in September. The 1 0 pitch on the way, taken off the plate again, ball two. Dodgers load up the right side of the infield. Freeman is big and strong and works every day. Two years ago, he led the majors, played 1,449 innings. Check swing, they look at third. No swing, says Ramon de Jesus. Freeman usually gets pretty deep into the count. And he's up there now, three and zero. Maeda into his windup with two out. The three zero pitch off speed and away. Ball four. So it looked like Maeda, and wisely so, pitching around Freeman. Adonis Garcia. Adonis Garcia coming in. So it's already been a pretty interesting year with first names. Remember, we had Socrates, and now we have Adonis. Modern scholarship describes Adonis, ever youthful vegetation god, a life death birth whose nature is tied to the calendar. We always think of the name Adonis as somebody very good looking. Maeda gets one by and all the way to the backstop. Randall goes and makes a useless throw to second, almost threw it away. So let's see, pass ball or wild pitch. And Garcia waiting. And it'll be a wild pitch. So the Braves with a possible run in scoring position and Garcia trying to pick him up. That Adonis name in the Hebrew is called Adonai, one of the names referring to the God of the Hebrew Bible. Here's the 1 0 pitch on the way. Adonis waits, swings, fouls it away, and they count 1 and 1. Adonis Arietta Garcia is from Cuba and was originally drafted by the New York Yankees. There's a big myth about Adonis if you care about the fact that Smyrna the daughter of the king of Syria conceived a child by him through trickery and the king wanted to kill her. One one pitch on the way outside ball two two and one and the gods intervene. And they turned her, Smyrna, into a mirror tree. And nine months later, the baby Adonis comes out of the tree. Understandably mythology. But the Greeks buy it. And here he is, Adonis Garcia. The 2 1 pitch on the way. Right hand to Maeda deals, and it's whacked to the gap in left center. It's going to be a one hopper in front of Crawford. The run will score easily. And the Braves are on the scoreboard right away. So Adonis is the name for a beauty. And as far as the Braves are concerned, he singled it in. As far as the catcher, Yasmani Grandal, who was watching a sinker that never sunk, and Crawford cautiously came over and held it to a single. So one to nothing Atlanta here in the first inning. 
Braves have been shut out six times this year. But they're on the board. And here's a man who is so very valuable especially with runners in scoring position. Nick Markakis is hitting over 370 with a runner in scoring position. Though Markakis a veteran from the American League played a lot for Baltimore. Another left hand batter in the lineup. Nick's a Georgia boy even though he played for years for Baltimore. The 1 0 pitch is off speed and away. 2 0. He was originally signed by the Orioles, a first round pick. He's 6 2 and 200. Bats and throws left handed. Signed first round back in 2003, and he was with the Orioles from 7 through 14 with the Braves last year. 2 0 pitch on the way is taken for a strike. So Kenta Maeda had Inciarte line out. Dono hit back to the box. He walked Freeman, pitching around him, and then Wild pitched him to second, and Adonis Garcia singled him home. Two and one the count. Marquez watching as a throw to first. Maeda working on a very good hitter, especially with somebody on base. Marquez with 29 runs batted in. Maeda ready. Here he comes. Pull down the right field line. Foul. One hopper into the stand. Nick Marquez was drafted twice by the Cincinnati Reds. They drafted him at a high school. They drafted him again. As their 23rd round pick, they offered him one and a half million, but he didn't sign. He waited and wound up signing for a million eight. So by holding off, he made another $350,000. Played for the Greek national team in the European Championships back in 2003. Maeda at the belt, looks over at Garcia, comes back to Marquecas, high fly ball to center. Peterson going back on the grass, on the track, and makes the catch for the out. So a long fly ball to center, but not before the Braves get on the scoreboard. Adonis Garcia singles home Freeman, one to nothing, Atlanta. Board leading one to nothing. Dodgers ready to come up and we'll give you Dave Roberts lineup. Chase Utley leading off at second base. Corey Seeger at short. Justin Turner at third. Adrian Gonzalez at first. Jock Peterson in center. Yasmani Grandal behind the plate. Trace Thompson in right field. Carl Crawford in left. Kenda Maeda batting ninth. On the mound. Julio Alberto Teron, 6'2, 205 pounder from Cartagena, 
in Columbia right handed all the way. You can talk all about his record one and five. You look at his earned run average however two point seven. And he's very consistent. On the road his earned run average a little over three. And at home a little under three. Right hand already in deals. Utley takes ball one and we're underway. Jace Utley putting up good numbers, solid, 282 with four home runs, 19 runs batted in, hitting in the 280s against Iran. Now the 1 0 pitch on the way, that's in for a strike. So Utley constantly busy leading the Dodgers' way. There was a tough ray on the road trip. They won three, lost four. One and one. Tehran comes back with a changeup like a bubble that floats in for a strike. Great pitch. Tehran has a blister on his right foot. That's a great concern to the Braves. He missed a start, and they're hoping that the blister will not cause him to change his pitching routine. Back he comes with a breaking ball swung on and missed and down goes up. So one away in the first inning. We'll look at the Braves behind him defensively and they shape up this way. Freeman and Johnson on the right. Darno and Garcia on the left with Max Smith in left. Enciarte in center. Marquez in right. And Flowers behind the plate. So here is Corey Seager. Seeger coming back from a good road trip at 345 couple of home runs five ribbies. He has nine home runs 28 runs batted in and Torrey takes ball one one and zero. Oh. Seeger playing very steady ball at short and swinging a hot stick and the Dodgers struggling to score runs so they need him desperately. He takes low and away ball two two and zero. Oh. Since May the third, one month, Seeger is hitting 302, six doubles, seven home runs, 16 runs batted in, all in that month. 2-0 pitch on the way. Corey looks. That's a strike, and the count two and one. Julio, if given three runs, his record is 34 and 11. Well, he's got one of them. Next pitch is beaten foul up along first base, and the count two and two. 34 and 11 if the Braves score three runs for him. And he pitches very tough, even when he's being shut out. He still won't give in. If you break down his pitching by third innings, his earned run average is three in each section of the game. There's a one hopper to shortstop tricky bounce staying with it is Garcia to throw him out. So Seager taps to third we have two out and Justin Turner coming up. Justin Turner has been struggling it's been a very difficult year for him. Justin hitting only 225. He has three home runs 16 runs batted in but. Hit only 136 on the road. You can understand a fellow who knows success as a big league hitter trying to find out the answer to the puzzle. What's wrong? Duran ready. Julio over the top, and he's a fastball low and away at 93. Tyler Flowers handling him is his favorite catcher. His earned run average with Flowers catching is 0.6 next pitch fouled away and it seems like Turner he's finding himself in a hole all the time if the count is no balls and one strike the opposition is hitting 131 against the composition of Tehran and Flowers the 1 1 pitch coming up Julio ready the right handed delivers a change high and a two ball one strike count. Tehran does not show any sign right now of the blister on his right foot. 
He has six wild pitches. So Tehran, number one in the National League. That might be important if the Dodgers get a man to third. Tehran from the first base side of the rubber. And the 2 1 pitch on the way. Fastball line down the right field line foul. Turner looks at the bat and tests it before going back to home plate. And I'm sure Justin saying to himself, you know, last year that would have been inside the line for a double. This year, foul ball. If you get a board against Tehran, you have to be very careful. He has a very good pickoff move to first base. He and Clayton Kershaw since 2013 have picked off 21. Madison Bumgarner 18. Duran ready 2 2 pitch swung on and missed and down goes Turner and the mystery continues. Two strikeouts for Tehran and at the end of an inning one to nothing Atlanta. Second inning, it's feeding time for the family, and the youngster very cautiously eating a chip. Mom and dad are holding their own in that department. And into the second inning we go. It'll be Tyler Flowers, the catcher, coming up. He's a Rosewell, Georgia boy, drafted by the Braves out of junior college. He's a big fella, six feet four, 245 pounds, so he can also play first base. Maeda ready and delivers, slips it in for a strike, and we're underway. Flowers spent pretty much of a career with the Chicago White Sox coming over to the Braves this year, even though he was originally signed by Atlanta. The strike one pitch on the way is off the plate. Tyler loves speed. It started, oh, years ago, taking up go-kart racing with his dad and brother he'll race velocities they tell me of up to 100 miles an hour he takes ball two two and one and for flowers he points to A.J. Przinsky as someone while he was with the White Sox who taught him a great deal and as life would have it Przinsky is backing up here in Atlanta change up in for a strike. They're happy with Tyler's performance. The Braves signed him to a two year deal. And A.J. Przinsky, who has done a lot and helped a lot of people, even though a lot of people thought he was a rebel, a guy always causing trouble, but he's not. Flowers fouls it away and a two ball, two strike count. A.J. speaks the way he thinks, no secrets. You'll know him immediately and how he feels. And apparently, a very good teacher to players both 
on and off the field as well. They really look up to him. If he plays in this series, we'll get to his rather formidable numbers. 2 2 pitch off the plate. So Maeda is making a lot of pitches, made 20 in the first inning, and he's now made six pitches to Tyler Flowers. Maeda again looks in, Grandall setting behind the plate, low and away. And the fastball is fouled off, and the count remains three and two. Tyler came up to the White Sox in 2009, and then he just stayed with them pretty much until coming over here to the Braves. Big right hand batter waiting, and the 3 2 pitch on the way. Swung on, popped foul off to the right, and well back into the crowd. Flowers is not a big batting average man at all in his career. He came into this year hitting only 223. So he has all the things you'd expect. He's big and strong, good eye hand coordination, recognition of pitches. But it's still very difficult to hit. 3 2 is swung on a towering foul ball out of play, though it's still 3 and 2. In his career, Flowers has piled up 46 home runs. So the big guy back in waiting. Maeda looks down the barrel to get a sign from Grandall. And the 3 2 pitch on the way. Maeda deals. Fastball flared into right center for a base hit. Over to cut it off is Trace Thompson. Bobbles it for a moment. The reason he bobbled it, he was looking at the runner, Flowers, while reaching for the ball. But Trace came up with it in time. And Flowers, a base hit to right field. And the batter now, Kelly Johnson. So a leadoff single brings up Kelly Johnson. Kelly left hand batter. So they have a bunch of them in the lineup. Kelly has been in and out with Atlanta throughout his career. He's an Atlanta boy. He takes a strike and the count 0 and 1. Kelly Andrew Johnson by name. He had a brother who played soccer at Rhodes College in Memphis. His grandfather was a fine hockey player in Minnesota. So a lot of big genes. Kelly swings, doesn't get it. Johnson was originally signed by the Braves out of high school. And then he went to the Diamondbacks, then to the Blue Jays, the Rays, the Yankees, the Red Sox, Oakland. Went to the Braves a second time, went to the Mets. And here he is with Atlanta for the third time. Kelly hit for the cycle. That was back in 2010. Strike two pitch just inside. One and two the count. The Maeda just missing and he'll take a pause to think about it. Johnson 6 1 about 200 reaches for a ball and nubs it to Maeda who makes the play to Gonzalez down to second base goes Flowers and we have one out in the second inning. Say friends get your Dodger license plate frame that'll be Monday Dodgers and Rockies. It's available to the first 40,000 fans and presented by Arco for tickets be sure to visit Dodgers.com slash promotion. So Johnson taps out one three flowers advancing to second and the batter now is the pitcher Julio Tehran. Tehran has been under the plate 17 times still looking for a hit struck out seven of them takes a high breaking ball for a strike and the count on one. Duran checking with Bo Porter, coaching at third. 
Eddie Perez over at first. Duran is batting eighth in the lineup. Malik Smith, the left fielder, batting ninth. Strike one pitches down and away, and a one ball, one strike count. So Maeda struggling a little. 20 pitches in the first inning. So far, 16 pitches with one out and a man at second base. He gave up a base hit in the first inning when Freeman was at second and Freddie scored. The 1-1 one, one pitch on the way, fastball off the plate. Ball two, two and one. What a gorgeous time of day and what a relief. As the sun sets, the temperature goes down with it and all is well. Two one pitch coming up. Tehran right hand batter Maeda delivers off the plate. Ball three. By the way, we started the evening by telling you the Giants suffered a major blow. They're going to lose Hunter Pence, the great right fielder, for at least eight weeks, maybe more. He's going to have surgery on his leg, torn ligament. But the Giants right now are leading the Cardinals two to one. Bottom of the seven, Johnny Cueto and Adam Wainwright in that one. And that game has moved to the top of the eighth. Tehran thinks it's ball four. They'll call him back for strike two. So a three and two count. Maeda trying to get his opposite number. Just did find the zone. Flowers the big catcher away from second base. And with one out the pitch is swung on and foul back. And so if nothing else. Julio is making his op and number work. No record whereby Tehran was any kind of a hitter. All right, three and two, one down, one nothing, Atlanta, second inning. Dodgers won two of three in Georgia, but both victories were extra innings. And there's a hopper heading for right field, and it's through. Stopping at third on the base hit is Flowers. So Kanta Maeda, uh, apparently not quite in rhythm. Tehran, who was 0 for 17, ends up with a base hit to right field. A diving try by Utley, but to no avail. So Flowers, the catcher, stopping at third. Runners at first and third, and Malik Smith coming up. Have you ever heard the name Malik's before? Well, his mom said that everybody in the family, the name begins with an M. But she was very impressed by a youngster in the neighborhood she thought was the brightest child she'd ever met. So what she did, she took the name Alex, which was the child's name, and then put an M on it. So he's Malik's. Simple, huh? Malix is a left-handed batter, batting ninth with runners at first and third, and takes a little breaking ball in for a strike. Malix has great genes. His mom ran hurdles at Florida A&M. He has a sister who ran the 100 and 200 meters. Another sister ran the hurdles. His brother was a running back in Arkansas, and his dad was a wide receiver. A shot up the middle for a base hit. Scoring easily is Flowers. Stopping at second is Tehran. And Malik Smith almost knocked the initials of Kenda Maeda with a shot up the middle. So the Braves are leading two to nothing. They've collected four hits already. Seemed like a sinking fastball, and Malik was all over it. And now Enda Inciarte will be coming up, and Rick Honeycutt is going out to see if he can find a solution. To what's going on? And in Ciarte will be coming up. So Smith base hit, run batted in. Flowers carries in the run. Stopping at second base is Tehran. So the Braves are after Maeda. One out, one in. Runners at first and second, and Ender Enciarte coming up. He lined out. To Adrian Gonzalez in the first inning. You know, last year there were only 2,300 hitters in the major league. That's right, there were only 20. 
Well, Enda Inciarte was number 16 on that list and that distinguished company. He hit 303. So Inciarte, a tough left hand batter, checking in. Maeda in trouble, checks, delivers, slow breaking ball, drops in for a strike. A little bit like that change that Clayton Kershaw throws. The Braves started to really make Maeda work. Flowers singled on the 10th pitch of his at bat. Duran singled on the 7th pitch. And then Smith walked up and whacked the second pitch. And the next pitch is lifted to center. Very playable. Looking up into the powder blue. Peterson to make the catch, and the runners have nowhere to go. So NCRD, a fly ball to center. Two down. And Chase Darno coming up. So Darno, right hand hitting shortstop. He had a pinch hit leadoff double against Washington in the sixth inning. So in his first 11 games with the Braves, he's done pretty well. Chase right hand batter. Maeda delivers off speed. Comebacker speared nicely by Maeda and throw to first for the out. So again, we see Maeda, a fine defensive pitcher, however, gives up another run at the end of an inning and a half, two to nothing Atlanta, and it's time for Adrian Gonzalez to lead the Dodgers back. The Braves have jumped out in front to a two to nothing lead, piled up four hits, and for Maeda, he made 46 pitches in the first two innings. Interesting that the Atlanta Braves get Tehran two runs early in the game as he prepares to face Adrian Gonzalez. For instance, the Cubs, Jake Arrieta, he leads the majors. He gets 72 runs in support. Tehran. He's received only 19 runs over his 11 starts. He ranks 133rd in the majors coming into today. So for him to get two runs early, it's quite a shock. So Tehran ready to work against Adrian Gonzalez, then Jock Peterson, followed by Yasmani Grandal. Tehran delivers fastball for a strike, and the count 0-1. Adrian Gonzalez trying to lead the Dodgers back, hitting a solid 294 and wore out Atlanta, hit 545 in the three game series in Georgia. Dodgers won two out of three, but it was tough. The two Dodger victories were in extra innings. Gonzalez with the count even, one ball and one strike. 
Outfield big split in right center field. Here's the 1 1 pitch on the way. Swung on, hit the other way to left field on his horse is Malik Smith to make the catch in fair ground inside the left field foul line. So one away. And the battle will be Jock Peterson. Jock Peterson hitting only 224 and very hungry. 0 for his last 16. Striking out four times. He does have eight home runs, 24 runs batted in. So, Jock with one out ready to check. They load up the right side on him. So, they leave Adonis Garcia on the left side. Teron turns on the rubber. Lanky right handed fastball on the inside corner for a strike. And the count, 0 and 1. Give you an idea of what happens to a ball player from Cartagena or anywhere, especially in Latin America. Strike one pitch is high, one and one. Tehran is from a neighborhood in Cartagena called Olea. It is a very difficult city, poor neighborhoods, a lot of open sewers, gunshot victims, unpaid streets, etc. Foul ball on Peterson and they count one and two. So you take a fellow like that, and during 12 years living there with 10 family members, there was a rundown one story home. They had a single toilet located in a muddy backyard. The family ran a small store out of one of their rooms. And what happened to him? They saw him throw a ball. And they gave him eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Can you just imagine the shock to the family? The one two pitch on the way swung on and missed down goes Peterson. And of course as Tehran stands out there. Following the strikeout. He started this year again. Imagine ten family members in a rundown one story home one toilet. And this year. He's getting paid three million three hundred thousand dollars. You wonder if that isn't almost too much to overcome a young man. But fortunately he has used his head as well as his arm. So two down here in the second inning two to nothing in favor of Atlanta. Yasmani Grandal who is really struggling checking in. Grandal has had six hits in the last forever as far as he's concerned and he takes off the plate two balls and no strikes Randall a switch hitter batting left handed he missed the past two games here's the 2 0 pitch swung on foul back to him one for Grandall. He's had just six hits in his last 66 at bats. That's a 106 batting average. He hasn't had a multi hit game since April 29th. So you know what he's looking for up there, two and one. Teron looks down the barrel, getting a sign. Right into turns. Here he comes, two one, and drops it in for a strike. And the count two and two. With Tehran, you know you're going to get a four seam fastball. You also get a two seamer, slider, curveball, and a change. Tehran ready, and the 2 2 pitch to Grandall is taken inside, almost hit his back foot. So a new ball put in play, three and two the count. Trace Thompson on deck. Sitting quietly, Kenta Maeda deep in thought. Two nothing in favor of Atlanta. Three two pitch on the way. Grandall takes up high for ball four. So the Dodgers get their first base runner. Tehran has struck out three, and now he walks Grandall, and that'll bring up Trace Thompson. Thompson. 
has done a good job hitting 270. His slugging percentage leads the team. He has eight home runs, 20 runs batted in, and has done a fine job in the outfield. Hit a solo home run in the fifth inning yesterday in Chicago. So Tehran's fastball in there for a strike, and the count on one. Trace Thompson in his last 25 games is hitting a solid 278 with seven home runs and 15 runs batted in. Duran with Grandall at first and two out. Grandall with a very short lead. Strike one pitch is on the hands lifted to right center. Very playable. Inciarte and Marquecas and it's Inciarte for the catch. So in the Second inning, no runs, no hits, a man left, and at the end of two, it's two to nothing at Lama. Atlanta leading the Dodgers two to nothing. Ken Maeda having two tough innings where he made a lot of pitches. 20 in the first inning, 26 in the second, and he gave up two runs and four hits. So second time around, it'll be Freddie Freeman, then Adonis Garcia, and Nick Marcakis. Freeman last year at one stage. With runners in scoring position, he was hitting 412. He's a hard worker, played in all his team's games in 2014. And Freddie takes a strike and the count 0 and 1. The other two, Starlin Castro of the Cubs and Hunter Pence of the Giants. Strike one pitch on the way. And my eight already deal swung on and missed going two. Freddie at 6 5 2 25. Second round pick back in 2007. Strike two pitch on the way, and that's low in a way. Dodgers loaded up on the right side. Seeger is on the second base side, so Turner. All alone, but way over, almost behind second base, considering the gap to the bag at third. The one two pitch on the way. Freeman fouls it off third behind the Dodger dugout. And the count stays to Freddie, one and two. Freddie getting a new stick, waiting on deck, Adonis Garcia. Freddie, one of three brothers, as he waits for Maeda. 
Freddie very unfortunate. His mom dead. Mom died back in 2000. So his dad did a great job raising the boys. Gets one foul up along first and a one and two count. For Freddie, baseball has been his life, and no doubt it's kept him in the right direction. He was a member of both USA Baseball's youth, junior, national teams, worked his way all the way up. One two pitch is golfed at and missed. So Freeman, who walked in the first inning, strikes out in the third. For Maeda, that would be his first strikeout. He's given up four hits and a walk. Was a low pitch around the ankles. Freeman chased it. Down he goes. The Braves have had, how can you say another word besides awful? But how they started this year has been absolutely brutal. To the fans, to the players, to management, it's been a nightmare. Give you a couple of numbers in a minute. The batter is Adonis Garcia, and he takes a strike. For Snitsker, well, Brian has a team that cost Freddie Gonzalez his job. So Brian Snitsker took over, but Snitsker really knows in his heart Freddie had a bad deal. First of all, the Braves at one stage this year had won two games at home and lost 20. I mean, it's bad enough to have a bad team on the road, but at home. 1-1 one, one pitch, low ball two, and here's the way it went. They opened up and lost nine straight. Then they won four straight, turned right around and lost eight straight. So they had 12 wins and 34 losses. That was the worst beginning since the, the Boston team of 1906. In 1911, the Boston team won 44 games and lost 107. I mean, it has been brutal. And you're talking about one of the proud organizations, remember, as Garcia strikes out. When you're talking about Glavin and Smoltz and Maddox, wow. So they have hit rock bottom in Atlanta. They come into this game. We know they're trying, but they're 16 and a half games back of Washington. At home, they only have won six and they've lost 23. So it's been a nightmare and apparently will continue that way for quite some time. So here's Nick Marcakis, one of many trying to lead them back. He has a look at a pitch for a strike and the count 0 and 1. Marcakis missed a clutch. He leads the team, nine go ahead RBIs. That's two off the National League lead. Strike one pitch to Nick, swung on, high bouncer over second. Nice pick by Seeger and throws him out. So Maeda starting to throw strikes now in the third inning. And at the end of two and a half innings, two to nothing, Atlanta.
third inning, two to nothing in favor of Atlanta. Two runs, four hits, no errors. What a sunset time. Actually, we still have bright blue sky, and there's just like skid marks of clouds are all pink up there. A dash here, a dash there. Sunset time in Southern California. Mm. Meanwhile, Carl Crawford, followed by Kenta Maeda, and then Chase Upley. Teron ready to go to work, leading 2 0 in the third. Right hand is first pitch, nubbed halfway to the mound. Teron picks it up, sends it over to first, and that'll do it for Crawford, a 40 foot comebacker. Pitcher, One down 18. and the batter, Kenta Maeda. A couple of things. That certainly Julio Tehran would like to change. On four days rest, his earned run average is over four. And tonight he's pitching on four days rest. When he has five days rest, his earned run average is 1.4. Right end already in his first pitch, high and away, ball one. One other thing, and Roger McDowell is pitching coach, Roger the Dodger. Great guy. Duran comes back 1 0, fastball in, Maeda showing bun. In the postseason against the Dodgers, Duran, no wins, five losses, and an earned run average of 6.7. 1 1 pitch on the way. Breaking ball for a strike. One and two slider. Duran has not allowed a hit yet. We're in the third. Comes back with a pitch chased by Maeda, who probably strikes out. So that would be the fourth strikeout for Tehran. Two down in the third inning. Chase Utley. Jay Utley, who struck out in the first inning, coming up. Duran so far doing a good job getting that first pitch for a strike. The two big commandments for a pitcher get the first pitch for a strike and get the first hitter in the inning. He comes with a change up, but it's high and away. Only 70 miles an hour. One ball and no strikes. Duran looks down the barrel. Flowers wigwagging a couple of signs out. And the 1 0 pitch, and that's off the corner. Not missing by much, but he missed. 2 and 0 the count. Julio deep in thought. Now the 2 0 pitch on the way. And that's in there for a strike. One thing for Tehran, as Utley waits, he joined some of the great Atlanta pitchers in the fact that he made three consecutive opening day starts. 2-1 pitch, swung on, lifted, foul off third, should go out of play, and does in the folks behind the Dodger dugout. Who are the other pitchers? Well, he joined Phil Necro, Rick Mahler, Greg Maddox, and Derek Lowe as the only pitchers in Atlanta history who have made three straight opening day starts. But he did so before the age of 30. He's the only member of the group to do it at that young age. But he's quite a young talent. Julio Tehran. Utley waiting in the 2 2 pitch on the way, swung on and missed, and Chase strikes out a second time. That's five strikeouts for Julio Tehran in the first three innings. And at the end of three, two to nothing, Atlanta.
Today is brought to you by the Dodge Challenger. Test drive one at your local Dodge dealer today. And by Jack in the Box. It's back. The Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack. Taste it before it's gone at Jack in the Box. Two to nothing in favor of Atlanta. A glimpse to the past. The Dodgers clinching the pennant against the Braves. The Milwaukee Braves, 1965. Sandy Koufax leaping in the air, running over from first, Wes Parker. Ball one to Tyler Flowers, who singled a right in the second inning and came around to score. One ball, no strikes. Maeda making 60 pitches, delivers, and it's fouled away. So Maeda struggling in the first two, settled down in the third, and now we'll see what he does against the trio, actually a quartet that gave him a bad time in the second inning. Flowers single, Tehran single, Smith single. One ball and one strike. Fastball, high chopper. Seeger backing up for a hop. One away. Say, friends, continue your Dodger retired numbers pin series collection tomorrow. The Dodgers and the Braves. And the pin features number 20, Don Sutton, courtesy of 76. For tickets, visit dodgers.com slash promotions. So one out. Left hand hitting Kelly Johnson checks in. Brave lead 2 0. We're in the fourth. Change up but missed. Kelly hitting only 208. Another off speed pitch. We seem to see quite a few of those tonight. Early in the game. Maeda trying to find himself. Shaky beginning. And that's right. Kelly Johnson, an infielder, second, third, played a spot of outfield. But back in 2006, he had Tommy John surgery anyway. And another strike. On the hands. We mentioned Johnson back in 2010 hit for the cycle. Fourth player in Diamondbacks history to do so. He homered early in his first at bat. Then he was hit by a pitch. Then he had a ground rule double. Then he had a two run triple. And in the eighth inning, he had himself a base hit of giant right hander Sergio Romo. And that gave him the cycle. Two balls and two strikes. And a hopper by the trying Gonzalez. So a one out single by Kelly will bring up the pitch at Tehran. 49, Julio Tehran. The Julio Tehran single to right field in the second inning. Clean base hit to right for Kelly. So Johnson, who's been playing since 2004, gets a base hit. And Tehran, who had been 0 for 17, single to right field in the second inning. Two runs, five hits for Atlanta. No runs, no hits for the Dodgers. Tehran bunting, but takes ball one. After Tehran, you have Malik Smith, who singled in a run in the second inning. 
Johnson short lead. The bunt is foul. It was a foul bunt. They'll have to try it again. Ball was inches from the first base foul line, but it was certainly foul. There's the bunt attempt, and the spinner is going to be right there, safe, and then spinning foul, and then it's picked up. Up here, we had as good a view as anybody, I guess, in the ballpark. See that thing foul. All right, one ball and one strike. And that bunch in the air, caught by Mida, throws to Utley, double play. Kenta Maeda spearing the bunt. Utley, as usual, Johnny on the spot. There's the catch, here's the throw, and there's Utley to spear. And at the end, a three and a half, two nothing Atlanta. Corey Seager will lead off here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Rather remarkable at his young age, 22 years, 37 days, to lead his team in RBIs. They talk about a little child shall lead them. Well, Corey's not a little child, but he still leads his team at that tender age. Sano, Harper, Franco, and Cassianos are behind him. But it's the years that count, and here he is, grounded to third in the first inning. Well, we can tell you it was a remarkable pitching duel, Johnny Queto and Adam Wainwright. However, as the game went along, and there's a drive to right field going back on it is Marquez and watches it go out. So Corey Seager hits his 10th home run, 29 runs batted in, and the Braves lead 2 to 1. To get back to the Giant game because that's so late. They're in the ninth inning, and the Giants have now opened it up. They lead the Cardinals four to one. Denard Span just singled in two against Rosenthal, who's been knocked out. So the Dodgers trying to perk up a little bit. I mean, down five and a half. They need somebody as the battery, and it looks like the kid's going to be the battery. Seven of the ten at home. Two and oh the count.
There's young Urias sitting alongside. But Seeger feels old compared to Urias, who's 19. Two and one to count. Well, there's certainly two youngsters who figured to lead the Dodgers to far better places than where they are and where they've been. Fly ball, shallow right center. It is caught by Enciarte. A nice play, getting applause from Tehran. So Ender Enciarte taking a base hit away from Turner. So the only hit given up by Tehran is a home run so far. He applauds his center fielder. In Seattle, not very well known, but he's a good all-around ball player. Gonzalez flied to left and hits a line drive, short hop, nicely, and the play is made. So two down and Jock Peterson coming up. Take another look at Corey Seager. It came up and got a pitch out over the plate above the knees and has the power to drive it into the right field stand. Ten home runs for the club's leader. Two out. Jock Peterson struck out in the second inning. Tehran has five strikeouts. Big curveball that misses. One ball and no strikes. Tehran was absolutely brilliant in the month of May. That's going to go down the left field line out of play. Give me an idea. In the month of May, Tehran's earned run average was 1.3. That put him third behind Kershaw and Bumgarner. One of his problems, the Braves just don't give him any run support. They're averaging a little more than two runs for him. And they've gotten him two tonight. Off speed, high fly ball to right appears playable. Marquez is there to make the catch. So Peterson a fly ball to right. One more time to number five. Corey Seager hitting his 10th home run of the year. A number five that was worn so many years with such great brilliance by Joe DiMaggio. Two to one in favor of Atlanta. It'll be Malik Smith, followed by Ender and Ciarte, and then Chase Darno, Corey Seager, along with his thoughts and his tenth home run, trying to get the Dodgers back even. 
Malik Smith single to center to drive in what is now the difference in the game. And a bun foul. Malik Smith had a memorable moment. First big league experience. He hit a ball and thought it was in play when head first into third base with a triple. His helmet came off, bounced up and struck him in the forehead. And in the dirt with a headache at third, the coach said, Malik, the ball went out. It's a home run. So his first home run kind of shook him up a little bit more than emotionally. He had to have five stitches taken across the bridge of his nose being hit by the helmet. And a little pop fly, a trio of Dodgers trouble. So Malik Smith gets a pop fly single to center. That makes him two for Center two. Fielder, Ender and Ciarte. Ender and Ciarte now coming up. Two runs, six hits for Atlanta. One run, one hit for the Dodgers. In Ciarte lined out and fly deep to center. Struggling a great deal, hitting only 208. Smith a cautious lead draws a throw anyway he has stolen six bases has Smith however he's been caught seven times so not much of a reason to smile Fastball on the outside corner. 0 and 1 to Ender and Ciarte. and 1. Inciarte's name using Spanish customs. The paternal family name is Inciarte. The maternal family name is Montiel. So he has a lot of names as he stands up there at the plate. His full name would be Ender David Inciarte Montiel. But he goes with Inciarte. Charlie Manuel talks about first day of spring training. Charlie got there, the manager, at 5.30 in the morning. Didn't run play, but it's going to be a long out to Peterson and back to first base, Bill Smith. And first guy there at 5.30 in the morning, N.C. Artem. He's a hard worker, nothing much to show for it tonight. 0 for 3. And the batter, Chase Darno. Don't know. Twice hit back towards Maeda. Two to one, favor of Atlanta. We're in the fifth inning. One out there goes the runner. Grandal double crutched. So he never got a chance. Soon as Yasmani double crutched, no chance, and he's angry at himself. So Smith seals. Okay, there's one, there's two. And with anybody who can run as well as Smith, no chance. So Smith now stealing second, and Darno trying to pick him up. Off speed for a strike. 
Mine and now has made 80 pitches. Oh, and two. Chase Utley to the bag, making Smith get back. Smith in the minor leagues stole as many as 64. So you know he can run. 64, 48, 34, 40. And down goes Darno. First baseman, Freddie Freeman. Now let's see if they pitch to Freeman. Yasmani looks over to the Dodger dugout. Will they or won't they? They are not going to pitch to him. They'll put him aboard. So they'll make Adonis Garcia prove himself in that cleanup spot. That's great, isn't it? We've seen a Socrates, now we have an Adonis. What else is in store? We had a ball player years ago, Wonderful Mons. Remember him? Three and oh. So in a moment, It'll be first and second, two down, fifth inning. And the Dodgers trying to get out of a jam with the Braves leading two to one. Third baseman, Adonis Garcia. Adonis single left and struck out. Garcia hitting cleanup, singled home Freddie Freeman in the first inning and then struck out next time up. Two on, two out. Garcia, five nine, and a good one ninety. Off speed for a strike. Boy, we have seen a lot of change ups from both Maeda and also Tehran. Braves hungry for a win. They gave you the numbers what a miserable start they have we won't go through that again but they have won 16 and lost 37 and there appears a little hot and they are 16 and a half games behind Washington one and two well there's a final score the Giants rolling along despite losing Hunter Pence but they will certainly feel his absence Giants five Cardinals one. Johnny Queto, his record now nine wins, one loss, and an earned run average of 2.1. Adam Wainwright, the loser, five and four, and an earned run average over five. So the Giants picking up a victory. They now have won 35 games. The Cubs. Considered certainly the best team in the National League. Cubs have won 37. So the Giants are right on their heels. Giants very consistent. 16 and 11 at home, 19 and 11 on the road. Fastball. Two balls and two strikes, two on and two out. Friday night crowd just kind of sitting back relieved that the heat has moved out for the night. And the runners go and the pitch is swung on and missed. So Adonis Garcia looked like he might have chased ball three to strike out with a double steal in progress and the Braves come up empty. Take a look. 
You see, he had to go up on his toes to go after it. Still, two to one, Atlanta. on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by the Energy Upgrade California. Energy tips, rebates, and financing options are available at energyupgradeca.org. Still two to one in favor of Atlanta in the first pitch to Grandall in for a strike. Atlanta scoring a run in the first, a run in the second. Corey Sager hit a home run in the fourth, and that's it. Check for a strike. 0 oh and 2. A little while ago, we were telling you the Giants won, beating the Cardinals there in high gear. For the moment, the Dodgers trail by six games. 0 oh and 2. 0 oh and. However, we also told you that the Giants have lost Hunter Pence for at least eight weeks. He's going to have serious leg surgery. So how are the Giants with and without Pence? Foul ball out of play. With Pence last year, the Giants won 34 and lost 18, almost two to one. Without Pence last year, they won 50 and they lost 60. So they will certainly miss him under Pence. And you know what? So will we. In on the knuckles, two and two. So Grandall strikes out, one away in the fifth inning. And the battle will be Trace Thompson. Trace By the Thompson. way, that'll be strikeout number six for Julio Tehran. Trace Thompson flied to center in the second. Tehran deep in thought, ready to go after him. And then Carl Crawford. First pitch is very important for him. If it's a strike, the opposition is hitting 131, but that was a ball. Fast ball hit to right center and deep. Back goes in Ciarte at the wall. It's gone. Grace Thompson hits it out to tie it up.
So Thompson hits his ninth, Seeger hits his tenth, and the Dodgers are even 2-2. So two runs, six hits for Atlanta. Two runs, two hits for the Dodgers. Dodgers have had one base runner, as we look at Trey's again. The one base runner was a walk in the second inning to Grand All. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Braves have had ample opportunity. They have left five in their five innings. They left two on in the first inning. Left two on in the second inning. Left another in the fifth. So we have a 2 2, bottom of the fifth, knowing full well the Giants have already won. One and two to Carl Crawford. Hit back to the box in the third inning. So Trace Thompson playing very well in right field, which reminds us to remind you, Yasiel Pui. Is on the DL with a hamstring. Big chopper to the right side. Kelly Johnson on a tricky hop makes the play. Two down. Kenda Maeda will be coming up as Trace Thompson relaxes in the dugout. Maeda struck out in the third inning. One to Canada. Oh, and two. So Tehran gives up two home runs so far, and we are tied. That's a hopper. Nice relief catch by Freeman. Feeds his pitcher coming over. That almost went down the line. So thanks to Thompson after Seeger earlier, at the end of five, a two two tie. The Dodgers played an absolutely incredible game in the Astrodome in Houston. 
First of all, the time of the game was seven hours and 14 minutes. Of the 48 players who could have appeared in the game, 44 of them did. The final score was won by the Astros on a base hit against Jeff Hamilton, who was a Dodger third baseman. <laughs> Let's go back to this one. Oh, what a game that was. Eddie Murray was playing third base. Fernando Valenzuela was playing first. Oral Hershiser pitched seven scoreless innings in relief. The game went 22 innings. Winning run, a base hit to right field. Yeah, can you imagine Fernando at first and Murray at third? 22 innings. In 1989, here's Hamilton's pitch. Base hit into right field. Mike Davis the throw, and we can go home and get a night's sleep. One ball and one strike. Went and pulled that low breaking ball. Pulled it foul. The Marquez went down to get that slow curveball. He only has one home run, which is a big surprise for a hitter of his caliber. One and two. Marcakis and his wife run the right side foundation. Going to bat against breast cancer. There's also a prostate cancer foundation. The home run challenge. Well, he is a very giving person. He was nominated for the Roberto Clemente Award a few years ago. The Right Side Foundation was created to help distressed children, whether they are disadvantaged, sick, lonely, or grieving, throughout Maryland. Well, he started it when he was in Baltimore. And he hits a fly ball deep to center. Peters into the track at the wall makes the catch. Maeda gestures to Grandall as if to say, I got away with one. Well, no, Marquez hits it deep, but not deep enough for him. Just right for Peterson. One out. Down in the Dodger bullpen. Since Maeda's pitch count now is up to 95, Adam Libator begins to warm up. Maeda did the heavy lifting in the first two innings. 20 pitches in the first, 26 in the second. Though so he's now coming up to 100. Tyler Flowers and then Kelly Johnson. Oh and two. Two runs, six hits, no errors for the Braves. Two runs, two hits, no errors for the Dodgers. Last year, the Braves battled the Dodgers, played them tough, and wound up splitting six games. One and two. Tomorrow night, Clayton Kershaw, the National League Pitcher of the Month. Flowers goes down on a 91 mile an hour fastball. And all of a sudden, Maeda has five strikeouts. Clayton alongside Howie Kendrick taking in the action. Kershaw's month of May in the baseball world, unbelievable. Johnson hit back to the box single to right. Check swing. The strike. 0 and 1. 
Giants beat the Cardinals five to one. Kenta has now reached the 100 pitch mark. Little roller foul up on first. Oh and two. Mike Fultonevich is due to pitch tomorrow night for Atlanta. And we're wondering if Fultonevich and Przinsky get into the game at the same time. Just did hold up. One and two to Kelly. Johnson was thrilled since he lives in Atlanta. In fact, his son was absolutely ecstatic. When he asked him, Dad, why don't you play for the Braves? Well, he'd already played for them twice. So it's his third time around, and most importantly, he's at home. So the deuces are wild on the board. Two balls, two strikes, two out, a two two tie. Ball three. Three and two. And popped up right side. Utley. And that'll be that. Quiet one, two, three inning for Maeda. Utley will be leading it off when the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the inning in a two two time. Trip, so let's take a look at the homestand. You don't have to look very long. They have tomorrow night and Sunday afternoon with the Braves, and then three games, three at night at seven with the Colorado Rockies. And in the blink of an eye, they'll then move out and play the Giants in Arizona on the road and come back in the middle of June and play Milwaukee and Washington. Now that's for the next few days. Meanwhile, we have a good one going here. 2 2, bottom of the sixth inning. Chase Utley has struck out twice against Julio Tehran, and then Corey Seeger after him. Kenta Maeda has made 105 pitches, and we'll see about whether he will continue in the game or not. Ball one to Chase. Utley trying to get something started. He had struck out only 36 times all year. So surprising to see him strike out twice. One ball and one strike.
Utley came into the game hitting a very solid 282. Now he's batting 279. On deck, Corey Seeger, who's quite a story himself. Line foul. One and two to Chase Utley. There's some action beginning now in the Atlanta bullpen. Tehran is due to lead off the next inning. So Ian Kroll, the left hander, Alexi Ogando is the right hander down in the pen. So Tehran hoping to get through the inning. Off speed and wow, Utley strikes out on the change. That means Chase has struck out three times and seven strikeouts for Julio Tehran. Now here comes Corey Sagan. Interesting for Corey in the first 32 games he hit two home runs in his last 23 games he has hit eight home runs. Ball one. On May the 10th, only the Braves had less home runs than the Dodgers. And on May the 11th, Corey started what is now certainly considered a home run tear. Eight home runs, 23 games. So since May the 11th, the National League home run leaders, Cincinnati with 33, Washington with 32, the Mets with 30 and the Dodgers with 30. Off speed and a high fly ball into deep center. I think he's hit another. Yep. So Corey Seager hits two home runs and the Dodgers lead three to two. So Tehran had a two to nothing lead, then a two to one lead, then a two two tie, and now Tehran, who is due to lead off in the seventh, is now down three two. Fastball. 0 and 1 to Turner. From up here, this looks like an off speed pitch. I think it was. And Seeger is strong enough to drive it into the pavilion. Almost straight away center. Oh and 1. Turner has struck out last time up. Enciarte made a diving catch. Now it becomes interpretation. If you're the guy following a guy who hits a home run and you take a pitch over your head, the first thought is he's sending me a message or just venting his spleen, getting a little anger out. One and two. So all that hard work for Tehran has gone down the drain. He's only allowed three hits. Three home runs. A little roller foul. Turner trying to figure out the puzzle. So many have been in his spot. Great year last year. Just can't seem to get started.
in the dirt. Three and two. Duran has walked one. That was Grandall back in the second inning. Oh, great. Came to the game, brought your glove, got yourself a ball, and a Jock Peterson shirt. Or a Mike Piazza shirt. I think that was a, a Piazza shirt. Three, two. High fly ball, slicing foul. And we'll go out of play. Oh, look at that. That's the man who did it. Ah, that, that marvelous, the pure joy of catching a foul ball. Oh, wonderful. Three and two to Justin. Back fastball at 93. Pretty good battle going on here. His fastball, the four seamer, has been clocked as high as 97. He hasn't thrown that hard tonight. Three and two. The hand lifted shallow center. Inciarte is there. So we have two down in the sixth inning. Turner going 0 for 3, and the batter is Gonzalez. 0 for 2. Kenta Maeda trying to stay loose before going out in the seventh inning. He's made 105 pitches, and with a one run lead, he wants to go and give it another shot in the seventh. Adrian flied to left, grounded to short, so he's not pulled the ball so far. The outfield straight away. Inciarte is shallow in center. Ball one. I don't think you see many center fielders playing that shallow on Gonzalez. Fastball, check swing, did he? Yes, he did. And a one ball, one strike count. They have stopped throwing in the Atlanta bullpen. Two and one to count to Adrian Gonzalez. Three runs, three hits for the Dodgers, all home runs. Two by Corey Seager and one by Trace Thompson. There they are together talking to A.J. Ellis. Change up, hit foul. Tehran, who had made only 63 pitches in the first five innings, has labored here. 20 pitches in the inning so far. Worst inning of the night. Two and two. Fast one miss. Like that was the slider. Three and two. And you lost him. So a two out walk to Gonzalez. That's only the second walk he has given up, but it might be his last pitch of the night. He has struck out seven. 
The bat will be Peterson. Three two Dodgers. And that'll do it for Tehran. So a nightmare night a pitcher with great stuff excellent control allows three hits two of them to Seeger for home runs and the other one to Thompson for a home run. We'll be back but he won't. Net LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop online at choosenissan.com. Three to two in favor of the Dodgers, a broken hearted Julio Tehran, who obviously had great stuff three hits, but three home runs. He made 85 pitches in the game. Struck out seven, walked two, and comes up empty. He was given a two to nothing lead and just couldn't hold it. So Ian Kroll, a left hander out of Illinois, working on Jock Peterson, trying to get the last out. And ball one. Ian Kroll, 6'1, 190. 25 years old this month. Originally signed with Vancouver, Oakland A's Farm Club. Two and all the count. Peterson struggling, although he has eight home runs, 24 runs batted in. So Kroll comes in on the wild side, 3 0. Kroll grew up not too far from Wrigley Field, so he went to a lot of games. He was certainly a Cubs fan. Fastball, curve, changeup. 3 0. That's a strike, 3 1. Kroll. Had been with the Nationals after starting with the A's. Then he went to Detroit and eventually the Braves traded Cameron Mabin to get Cole. Three and two to Peterson with two outs, so Gonzalez. Ready to go from first. Freddie Freeman directly behind him. There he goes. And there goes Peterson. So Peterson strikes out a second time. Eight Dodgers have struck out, but not Corey Seeger. Seeger rounded out and then Homer. And then came up again and hit another home run. And at the end of six, with Seeger leading the way, Dodgers lead 3 2.
Point up a team's power is to look at the Atlanta Braves. The Braves have 22 home runs amongst the 25 teammates. Arenado of Colorado is 17. Todd Frazier of the White Sox 17. Mark Trumbo of Baltimore 17. But they are down 3-2 and we're in the seventh and Maeda still in there. Inciarte will be following Smith. Little roller up along third, charging, gloved by third, and the out. So Justin Turner didn't have to make that bare hand grab and throw. He used the glove and he was still able to get Snyder. Who was born over in Las Vegas. Oh, nice play by Justin. One away. And now let's see. Maeda might be coming out right now. Dodgers have had Libator in the pen, and that will do it for Kenta. Dodgers come in to congratulate him. Out he goes. Sayonara. Kenta Maeda. Ichiban. We'll be back. on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by BMW. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com and by Children's Hospital Los Angeles. We treat kids better. Dodgers lead three to two. Kenta Maedo gave 107 pitches. Goes out leading three two. And now it's up to Libertor to work and help him to get a victory. Libertor working on Maxwell Smith. Ball one. Casey Fiend gets up in the Dodger bullpen. Inciarte on deck. Malik Smith was originally drafted by the Padres. He's from Tallahassee, Florida. And if he gets aboard, he runs like the wind. He had a base hit, stole a base in the fifth inning. The bunt went right back to Libertor. He is fast. Two down. Friends celebrate Dodger pitching great Don Newcomb's 90th birthday next Wednesday, June 8th. First 40,000 fans Andrew, in attendance receive a Don Newcomb bobblehead presented by United Healthcare. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. I think Atlanta is double checking. Didn't think it was that close at first, but they're checking. 
course if Smith gets on you're looking at a double I mean in the blink of an eye he'd be at second base how close that close yeah he's done so they didn't bother no reason to two down in Ciarte lined out flied out deep and flied out Malik Smith goes two for three ball one Jim Johnson right hander begins to warm up in the Atlanta bullpen there he is formerly with the Dodgers one ball no strikes two and oh Adam Liebator asked to pitch an inning. Dodgers backing him up in the bullpen. Inciarte with the shortstop, Chase Darno on deck. And that's going to hit the center. One step in, a couple more, and that'll do it. So with an intentional walk the last base hit was Smith in the fifth inning and the Dodgers lead 3-2. Three to two lead and a former Dodger Jim Johnson coming in Johnson has been with a lot of ball clubs but last year he was 0 and 3 in 23 games with the Dodgers Jim is a big fella six feet six 250 pounds signed by the Braves going way back he was Brought up in the Baltimore organization, threw very hard, struck out a lot of people. He had a couple of years where he struck out well over 100 in relief. So now he'll be facing Grandall, then Thompson and Crawford. Ball one. Grandall struggling at the plate, walked and struck out. Two and all. Interesting, especially if you are keeping close touch on the players, and especially bread and butter for Kenta Maeda. Two and all. Ball three. Remember in the first inning, Freeman had walked, and the pitch got away at the plate and was ruled a wild pitch. However, the scorer has gone back to look at it. Freeman certainly went to second base, but they're going to rule it 
a pass ball charged to Grandall. So well, that means Maeda only allowed one run instead of two, one earned run. Three and one. And ball four. Trace Thompson coming up. He had flied to center in the second inning, and then in the fifth inning, he connected. It was a pitch up above the belt, and he drives it into the seats. Trace Thompson with nine home runs now, 21 runs batted in. That's been the offense tonight. Thompson a home run, and Seeger two home runs. Hard double at least down the line. The left fielder Smith is over shifted. So Thompson in the second, rounding third and stopping his ground ball. Boy, that was a blistering double off the bat of Trey Thompson. So Jim Johnson comes in in a tough 3 2 game, and the next thing you know, their run is at second and third, and nobody out. In the Dodger bullpen, Joe Blanton is warming up. No chance for Garcia to get a glove on that ball. So Thompson with a home run and a double. Infield has to play up. Crawford the batter and Scott Van Slyke out on deck. Fastball for a strike. Crawford it back to the box, grounded to second. Van Slyke ready to make an appearance. He'd been in four games prior to tonight. Rehab briefly in Oklahoma City. And here he is. Change up gets away. One ball and one strike. Randall at third, Thompson at second. Little dribbler, the runners are frozen. They throw to first in time. So the runners stay with one out. And the batter now, Scott Van Slyke. Nice play by Adonis. It's hitter, number 33, Scott Van Slyke. So the Dodgers lose Tweed to the DL and they get Van Slyke back. Scotty, before he was injured, had nine at bats. He was one for nine. Got his average up to 111 and then went on the DL. Ball one. Right hand hitter off the bench. He can also play left field and first base if need be. One and no. Off speed changeup in for a strike. One and one. Jim Johnson been pitching a long time. This would be his 12th. Major League season. Fastball at 93. Johnson, a couple of years ago, as C. Granella's talk, a couple of years ago, He's had 51 saves and the next year 50. Change up and positioning was great inside at the hand. So if you advance like you're looking fastball and he just changes up to break at the end of it. Chase so that is the first strikeout for Johnson. 
It also means nine Dodgers have struck out. They only have four hits and all three runs on home runs. And here's a, a summation of tonight. Chase Utley is not only 0 for 3, he has struck out all three times. Infield back with two out. Ball one with a change. Chase has been through it all at 37. I'm sure he has struck out three times in a game. You wonder if he ever struck out four times in a game. Maybe. Second and third, Thompson at second, Grandall at third. Fastball. A little mustard on that thing, 93. Big Jim. Had those two great years, 51 saves, 50 saves, and in all honesty, never heard from again. Not really. I don't know whether he burned out his arm. That's 101 saves in two seasons. He was in 145 games. There's a change up again. Because anybody remembers Jim Johnson from years ago. You would go up there looking fastball. One ball and two strikes. Randall walk Thompson double. Crawford little ground ball. Van Slyke a strikeout. Fastball missed. Close. In fact, the catcher Tyler Flowers saying something to the plate umpire, Mark Ripperberger. He can't believe it. He thought it was a strike. It's okay. You can do that as long as you don't start gesturing and incite the crowd. Three and two, two out. Runners at second and third. The infield is back. Dodgers trying to add to a three to two lead. And you got him again. So naturally, Chase will get the question Have you ever struck out four times in a game? Well, right down the date. And at the end of seven, it's three to two Dodgers. The eighth inning, Scott Van Slyke, who strikes out for Libertor, stays in the game and goes into left field. Joe Blanton comes in out of the bullpen. He will go in Carl Crawford's spot. 
and we move to the eighth inning. We have just received distressing news, although there were a lot of people figuring that we were coming close to the end. The story out of Arizona. We understand right now that Muhammad Ali, the former Cassius Clay, has passed away. That, of course, will be a huge story throughout the sports world. Affecting not only boxing fans. Fans of every sport and those who don't care about sports. He had so much. Of a reaction from his fans and the impression that he made on so many people. Muhammad Ali. What was it move like a butterfly sting like a bee. Something like that. Float like a butterfly. Okay. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. One ball and one strike. One and two. Chase Darno twice hit back to the box and struck out. Inciarte hitting in the leadoff spot 0 for 4. So not much for Freeman to come up. When the first two hitters are 0 for 7. Make it 0 for 8. So Darno strikes out for the second time. First baseman number five, Freddie Freeman. The paid attendance tonight, 46,366. 46, 366. With fireworks after the game. That's a little more than the average here. Our average for the game's 45,196. Tomorrow night, Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw with that magnificent record of seven and one. A brilliant earn run average. And he'll be on display tomorrow. Kenley Jansen begins to warm up getting ready for the ninth inning a very tough game three two Dodgers three home runs by the Dodgers that's it and the Braves scored in each of the first two innings and have not been heard from since breaking ball lifted to left field Van Slag just gets in the game and makes the play for the second out. Two down in the eighth. Adonis Garcia. Third baseman number 13, Adonis Garcia. Single to left in the first inning, struck out twice. So Blanton gets two quick outs in the eighth. The last hit for the Braves. Malik Smith single in the fifth inning, leading off the inning. They have not been heard from since. Oh and one to Adonis. Fast ball and he's late getting on it. Oh and two. If you just joined us earlier we talked about the name Adonis. The idea in mythology that the woman bearing him was turned into a tree, and the tree eventually gave birth to Adonis, according to Greek mythology. One and two. Well, he's got a little bit of a tree in his hands. Chased a bad ball, and down he goes. So a nice inning for Blandon. He comes in, faces three, strikes out two, and we're heading for the bottom of the eighth. Three to two, Dodgers.
we look at tomorrow's probables, we know that Clayton Kershaw will bring that great rate of the month of May, 5-0, and oh, ERA of less than one. However, Mike Poltonevich was supposed to pit for Atlanta, and he is reportedly scratched from starting tomorrow with elbow soreness. So we'll see about Poltonevich. Meanwhile, we will see Hunter Serbenko, big boy out of Texas and originally drafted by the Red Sox. 6'1", 225 pounds, 26 years old. Out of Baytown, Texas. Corey Seager, of course, the big story tonight. Grounded to third, homered in the fourth, homered in the sixth. The home runs lost a little sizzle because Chase Utley had struck out four times tonight. And each time that Hundley struck out, oddly enough, well, not each time, three of the four, it was the last out of the inning. The first strikeout by Utley was opening up the game. But Chase closed the third, closed the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and he will just let that roll off, and we'll see him tomorrow. One and one. High slicing fly ball down the left field line. It's carrying, and it's gone in the stands. Home run for Seeger, his third of the night. Quite a few Dodgers who have had three home runs in a game. And the crowd asking for a curtain call. And he'll take a quick one. So the Dodgers lead four to two, and Corey Seager has hit three home runs. Gil Hodges and Sean Green are the two Dodgers who have hit four. But going all the way back to Jake Fournier in 1926 in Brooklyn, Gene Hermansky and Duke Snyder and Roy Campanella, Tommy Brown, Don Demeter out here, Jimmy Wynn, Davy Lopes, Corey Snyder, Mike Piazza, Kevin Elston, we mentioned Sean Green. He sopped Choi, remember? Andre Ethier, Juan Uribe, and Corey Seeger. So the Dodgers have four home runs and a double. Seeger's ball carrying and carried itself in. There was no win. The flags are hanging limply. He was just strong enough to hit it out the other way. Two and two. Last year, in going more into the record books, on Adrian Gonzalez had three last year against Andrew Kashner and the Padres in April. So another name added to the list. to the count. Turner trying to get a board 0 for 3. Did he? He swung. Didn't mean to. Started to hold up and couldn't do it. So Turner strikes out a second time. 
MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers every out-of-market game live in HD on over 400 devices, including a free subscription to At-Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply, so be sure to visit MLB.TV for details. June the 3rd, 2016. What a night for Corey Seager. Three home runs against Atlanta. Seager is from Canopolis, North Carolina. Lives in Concord, North Carolina. So he can't be too far from Atlanta. Older brother Kyle, I don't believe, has ever hit three in a game. Oh, and one. There's a hopper at short. Staying with it is Darno. And that'll do it for Gonzalez. Dodgers, of course, having to win tonight to stay pace with the Giants. Giants beat the Cardinals 5 to 1. But for the Giants, they suffered a big blow. They've lost Hunter Pence for it looks like a good eight weeks at least. And the Giants still win well without Pence. Here's Peterson, struck out twice, fly to right. So Seeger, who had nine home runs at the start of the night, is the first Dodger to homer in double figures. He has 12. Trace Thompson talking with him. Thompson hit one out in the fifth inning. One ball and no strikes. Check swing. They're going to look. Swing. One and one. Peterson struck out, fly to right, struck out again. 11 Dodgers have struck out tonight. 11. But they're leading 4 2. Boyd Robertson, who is a demon at such things, when I talk about the fact he's from Concord, North Carolina. Not too far from Atlanta. Boyd right away comes up. Corey, Concord's 263 miles from Atlanta. One ball, two strikes. High chopper. Tough play. Throw. Got him. Wonderful play for Kelly Johnson to come across running away from the play. But Corey Seager is running away with the game. Three home runs tonight. The third one right down the left field line and in the crowd. And we're heading for the ninth. Seager four, Atlanta two.
with the Dodgers leading four to two. We've arrived in the ninth inning, and to no one's surprise, Henley Jansen is asked to get the last three outs. Kenley one and one, grade ERA of 1.3, and the most important, strikeouts to walks. Look at that, 21 strikeouts and one walk. One added note about Corey Seager's big night, hitting three home runs, joined a lot of great names in Dodger history, but he's a rare bird to do it as a rookie. High fly ball, Van Slyke. One away. The batter will be Flowers. The last Dodger rookie to hit three was Don Demeter way back in the Coliseum, April the 21st, 1959. That was against the Giants. And his third home run was a walk off home run to beat the Giants 9 7. We mentioned before Don Demeter was a wonderful human being who had the the different hobby of collecting Bibles. Well that'll give you some kind of a idea of what kind of a man he was. Tyler Flowers single grounded out struck out. Four runs five hits for the Dodgers two runs. Six hits for Atlanta. Another high pop fly. Gonzalez, Utley. Utley makes a one hand catch in front of Thompson. So two down in the ninth inning. And again, a reminder the Braves' last hit was hit by Malik Smith in the fifth inning. They've not been heard from since. And here's the veteran Kelly Johnson hit back to the box single to right popped up four runs five hits and no errors for the Dodgers and of the five hits four home runs and a double for the Braves two runs six hits and no errors the Dodgers will keep pace with the Giants who beat the Cardinals earlier five to one. So the Dodgers remain five and a half behind San Francisco. Line drive bullet into center. The so Johnson comes up with a two out single the first base hit since the fifth. And we will see about a pinch hitter coming up. Jeff Francoeur will be coming up. So Frank Coor putting up good numbers 281 with two home runs 14 runs batted in. And a strike. Jeffrey Braden Frank Coor. A number one pick by the Braves back in 2002 and when he came up he had two wonderful years. He had 29 home runs and 103 RBIs in 06 19 home runs 105 RBIs the next year but he hits a chopper to third and that will be that a little fancy footwork for Adrian at the other end of the throw. So Jansen comes in. Gives up a 